Let's jump into God's Word. Today, today I want on evangelism. Uh, for the next, actually, for well, this week, two more, and two weeks after this, we're going to talk about evangelism. Uh, the title of this series is Living Loud. Living Loud. Learning to live loud for Jesus in a world that wants us to not say anything about Jesus. They want us to live on mute. But what they don't know is what we've got is what they need. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, you got something that the world needs. And his name is, anybody want to help me out? Jesus. His name is Jesus. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Thank you, Bailey. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. The Bible says, Then he said to them, Oh, you want to get there? You want to turn there? You, okay. Then he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Hey, I love that. You know why I like that? Because there's a lot of, there's all in there. And all means all. All means you. All means me. I'm thankful that this is a who's, now if y'all going, I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach whether you help me preach or not, okay? And uh, don't let the nine o'clock outdo you in their worship and their praise. They get here early and they're loud, all right? And I'm warmed up because I've already preached. So don't be looking at me crazy. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Y'all, this is a whosoever gospel. I don't know if that means anything to you, but it means something to me. It, that's what drives me to want to share the gospel because I know it's for whoever I'm talking to. It's for whoever you work with. It's for whoever lives inside your house. It's for whoever's on the outside of these four walls. It's for whosoever is in this house today. And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. This is evangelism. That's the word, evangelism. What does evangelism mean? It means the spreading of the gospel by public preaching. Whew. Some of y'all just said, whew, good, I ain't got to do it. Because I'm no preacher. Let's continue. Or personal Witness. Mm. When I work for the city, I see uh, Mr. Deloach here today. We worked together for a time. I remember when I went to work for the city, I had to, used to have to go to court. And I can remember uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the attorney, or most of our court was, the, well, there was some attorneys, but a lot of times the judge done all the talking. And he would say, and or the attorney would say, that's, when you'd say something as a witness, they'd say, that's hearsay. You ever heard that? Shut you down. You had a good story to tell them, but they shut you down. And you know why they shut you down? Because they said, did you see it with your own eyes? Did you hear them say it with your own ears? Did you witness it? Do you have a first-hand account or did you hear it from somebody else? If so, we don't want to hear what you've got to say because you didn't see it with your own eyes. I hear old-time preachers, usually Pentecostal preachers, they'll say something like this. I don't know if you've ever heard it. They'll be preaching hard and, they'll, and then they'll stop and say, Can I get a witness in this house? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Can I get a witness in this house? I wonder if I could get a witness in this house. Somebody who knows they were way down and low, but Jesus reached down. You don't have to hear it from somebody else. You've got your own. You're all, anybody, can I get a witness in this house? You've got your own experience with Jesus. I love your story, but I got my own story. I love your testimony, but I got... I'm about to shout all across this. You better, knee, you better straighten up. 
I got my own story. When I stand before somebody and begin to tell them about Jesus, I tell them my own story. And what he done for me, he will do for you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Can I get a witness in this house? Yeah. I've I seen it with my own eyes. I was there. You wasn't there. I was there. I was there when Jesus come and is swept me up in his grace, swept me up in his mercy, opened my eyes, and for the very first time I could see what life was truly all about. For the first time I had purpose when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I received forgiveness of my sins. I was washed under the blood. You might have not been there, but I was there. Therefore, I got a personal story. I can stand up and say today, and you know what? That's why I'm here today, because, Jamie, I got a personal story. Story because I encountered a personal Jesus and he has changed everything about my life. Are there any saved people in the house today? Well, I got to go or I'll never get finished spreading the gospel by public preaching or personal witness, witness, zealous advocacy of a cause. I pray that you get zealous. When you leave here, I pray that you're stirred to share the gospel with other people I know most of you don't right most of us don't but I'm but I'm praying I'm I'm gonna give it three weeks the Holy Ghost only needs a moment And I believe somewhere in those three weeks the Holy Ghost is going to get a hold of you and he's going to stir something on the inside of you and you are going to get a compassion for the lost like you have never had before and you are going to begin to share the gospel like you never have before and you are going to see people give their lives to Christ like you've never seen before. Well, praise the Lord. You say, well, I don't have to tell people. Do I? I mean like, Can I, I heard somebody say it's spiritual, but it's not biblical. I heard somebody say, I don't have to tell nobody about Jesus. I'm just going to live it out in front of them. Coward. Hey, I, I, I can come up with a good excuse about anything too. No. You telling me if your neighbor's, and I'm getting way outside of my notes and everything, you telling me that if your neighbor's house was on fire, you woke up and you said, oh my goodness, the Sapwell's house is on fire. Would you go out knowing they're upstairs and don't know it? Would, you're just going to live it out in front of them now. You ain't going to say nothing. So you gonna, what you going to do? Go outside Look at the fire and then live it out. I'm not on fire. I'm glad I ain't on fire. You're going to live it out in front of, is that what, no, you know what you do? You say, hey, woohoo, Michael, you're going to pick up a baseball, a rock. You're going to throw it through their window. You're going to try to get them on the phone. You're going to call everybody you know that knows them. And you're going to say, get out of the house. Your house is on fire. Would you not do that? How many would do that? Well, there's people that you work with, that you live with, that you go to church with, that you go to church with, live in your own house. And their house is on fire. Huh? Their house is on fire. Friend, this evangelism I'm talking about, dear God, please live it. But you're going to have to open your mouth and tell people about Jesus. Here's my first point. Are you an answer to prayer? Or are you a prayer request? The Lord gave me this several months ago and now I'm going to preach it. 
Are you an answer to prayer or a prayer request? Matthew chapter 9. What are you talking about, Pastor? Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Look what it says. Jesus then said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant. But the workers are few. Then he said, therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. What are you talking about, Pastor? Right outside these four walls here. You know what? There's more than four walls in this church. Right outside these walls, it looks like a lost, dying, jacked up, messed up world. But you know what Jesus says? I see a harvest. See, I believe a lot of us Christians are intimidated by how dark and how sinful the world is. But Jesus is not. I pray that we would begin to look at the fields as Jesus sees them. Look at the world as Jesus sees them. Because what Jesus says is there is a great harvest, an abundant harvest right outside of the church house. But there's nobody to gather it in. I've been praying, Lord, send some laborers. Send some people who are in love with you and they have a compassion for the lost and they want God, God do something in someone, baptize someone in compassion, God, so that they'll see that this isn't just a sin jacked up, sin filled world bunch, full of bunch of lost people, but there is a harvest of souls. If we'll just go out and begin to share the gospel, here's what I want to tell you. I want to make this easy for you. I want you to know this. Jesus cares more about the lost than you do and that's so important because what that means is because nobody can get saved without the Father drawing them. What that means, I got good news, what that means is you see a sinful jacked up drug addict outside or an alcoholic out there but what Jesus and what you don't know is Jesus has already been working on the heart of that person and he's worked on the soil of that person and he's just waiting on you to share the gospel of Jesus. He's just waiting on you I want to ask you as I pray, and I've been praying to the Lord of the harvest, send harvest, send laborers in this harvest. I want to ask you, are you a answered prayer? Are you one that will stand up and say, I'm going to quit being lazy. I'm going to quit being complacent. I'm going to go out to the field. Are you an answered prayer or am I still praying for you? Are you a prayer request? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Number two, Christ has called you to be a fisher of men. Somebody say me. Yeah, God has called you to be a fisher of men. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. These men were fishermen. They fished for fish. But Jesus come by one day and he said, "Uh uh-uh, y'all come follow me. He said, and I will make you fish for people. I told the 9 o'clock service this morning, I pray to God we wake up every morning after today, we wake up and say, I'm going to catch a big one today. I'm going to catch a big one today. Anybody, any fishermen in here, not fisher of men, but fishers of fish. Anybody, you like to go fishing? I seen, I seen, I seen, I seen, uh, I seen somebody on Facebook from church here, and they caught a bunch of the Carsons. They bu- caught a bunch of fish. And them fish didn't come from South Georgia either, because them fish was red and and all kind of different kind of colors. I don't know where they were at, but they caught some fish. Listen, this is what I know about fish: people who catch fish, they know where the fish are. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know where the, you act like you know where the fish are. You say, the, they right over here. I've heard somebody says that looks real fishy. Right? Over there. 
You know where the fish are. Let me tell you something. As a fisher of men, you got to know where the fish are. Let me help you. I know where the fish are. Let me tell I've been fishing for a little while. Let me tell you where the fish are. The fish are in your house. The fish are at your at the place where you work. The fish are at Walmart. The fish are in this church. The fish are at Kroger. The fish are at, anybody know what I'm talking about? I know where, hey, there are a lot of fish in this pond. Some people say everybody goes to church in Waycross. That don't mean they may go to church, but they've not been raised up in Christ. They are not the church. I can tell you, there's a lot of fish, uh-oh, right here in this church. And I'm going to preach the gospel in just a little bit, and you're going you're to get saved. Bring you in. They know where the fish are. You know what also I know about fishermen? They're good casters. Now, let me say it like this. They are consistent casters. They say, I know I've done this myself. I am no good fisherman. I'm a fisherman. I, I fish like just randomly. I have to borrow people's stuff. I ain't no fisherman. You know what I mean? I get a wild hair, I'll go fishing. Something like that. And sometimes I think I'm better than I am. And I say, I know where the fish are. They right, they, the whole, the whole, there's a big old lake or pond, but I, in my mind, I think they're only right there in the hardest place where you could cast. The hardest place to cast is where the biggest fish is. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Right, it, I'll tell you where it's at. It's right where that big limb comes across, and then you got that log, and then you got this little log right here, and you can only throw it like in the, a place this small. If you, if you miss it, you're going to get hung up in the log or you're going to get hung up in the branch and, and you ain't going to catch no fish. You know where fish ain't? Fish ain't in the trees. And I'll go, you know, I'll get fancy with it. I'll start thinking back and watch old videos of fish I've seen on YouTube, fit people fishing, bass fish. How they, and I'm thinking, That's, that, ain't, that ain't hard. <sighs> yep. You know what happened, don't you? Huh? Yeah, but what my fault? <laughs> I got hung up. The wind blew right when I threw that cast. And there I am, hung up in the tree. Listen, what I, what I figured out is good fishers are consistent casters. Listen, you ain't going to catch a fish if your bait ain't in the water. Huh? You won't catch a fish hanging up in a tree. You got to make sure your bait's in the water. Not only do you need to make sure your bait's in the water, but listen, good fishermen make sure they got the right bait. You got to have the right bait. And baby, I'm going to tell you something. I got the right bait. What is the bait? Who is the bait? The bait is Jesus. And if you'll cast out your net, if you'll cast out your net with Jesus as the bait, I'm telling you, Jesus will draw all men unto him. Listen, people don't need to know about your successes and about your pedigree and about your how much education education you got no you know hey they don't even need to hear about all the scriptures that you know you know what they need to hear they need to hear this is who I once was but when I gave my life to Jesus he turned everything around and if he'll do it for you me he'll do it for you somebody do you know what I'm talking about in this house yay make sure you got the right bait so you point three you cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ if you're going to evangelize, if you're going to share the gospel of Jesus, you can't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul said it. Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Put it on the screen. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power. Y'all, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone who believes. What is the gospel? The gospel is good news. The gospel is Jesus and what he has done for us. He died for us and he rose again. And He not only died for us, but he died instead of us. He took our place. And while he was there, Peter said on the cross, he bore all of our sin upon his body. Every sin, anybody ever committed any sin in here? I know I ain't got no people, no, nobody in here. You committed any sin? All those sins you've ever committed, all of them, even the ones don't nobody know about. Jesus knows about them and he 
bore them upon his body on the cross. And when he died, sin died. And all you've got to do is place your faith in Jesus Christ. And when you do, guess what? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's not I who lives. It's Christ Jesus who lives in me in this life that I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. He who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. I'm telling you the best story that's ever been told. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed of it. And guess what, friend? I'm not ashamed either. Because I got something that the whole world needs. Listen, point number five, number four, excuse me. We must take sharing the gospel our responsibility. We must take sharing the gospel our responsibility. Guess what I am not called to do? I am not called to be the only one that shares the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you want that to happen in this church, and I know you're not that stupid, but if you want that to be that kind, me to be that kind of preacher and that to be this kind of church, you're going to a dying church. You're going to a dying, dead church. Just a few generations of being extinct. Let me tell you what my job is to do. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he himself, Jesus, gave some, some people, to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Why did he give us all those folks? Why? Next verse. To equip the saints for the work of ministry you know you got your ministry some of y'all been wanting a ministry you got your ministry the Bible gave you a ministry what is that ministry of the Bible says Paul would tell us that is a ministry of reconciliation that you have been given a, you have been reconciled to God therefore God has given you the ministry of reconciliation to tell people you can be reconciled to God and this is what you tell people be reconciled unto God that's your ministry God has given you a ministry you know what God called me to do God called me to make sure you know that's your ministry and to equip you to do that ministry let me say it like this shepherds don't make sheep Sheep. Now, when you go and you get mad at me real quick, just make sure you get it right. I hate for people to be mad at me and get it wrong. Okay? Sheep make sheep. Like, if you want a baby sheep, you got to have two Sheepses. That's the plural form of sheep. You should have been here at nine o'clock. We had to talk about it, figure it out. You know, that's the weird. That's one of the weirdest words in the English language. Sheep. You got one sheep. It's a sheep. You got seventy-four sheep. It's sheep. Is that right, Brenda? It ain't sheepers, is it? It ain't sheep eye. It's just sheep. That's why people can't speak English, y'all, because it don't make no sense. You get one sheep and another sheep, and they have, they get their sheep on, and guess what they make? A sheep. The shepherd and the sheep, they shouldn't. It's wrong. They can't make a sheep. Here's what you need to know. 
I'm to make you, the shepherd is to make you healthy because only healthy sheep make sheep. You can get a sick sheep, they won't make no sheep. Can I tell you, I think the church don't grow while people don't, the church isn't evangelizing. It's because we got a bunch of unhealthy sheep. And so I take the responsibility right here in myself, not the teacher, not the preacher on TV, not the church down the road, but right here, I pastor him to church 3205 Memorial Drive, and it's my job to make sure the sheep in this church is healthy so they can go out and make some sheep. I want this to be a sheep breeding ground where we go out and make sheep. This house is full of sheep. Everywhere you look, there's sheep. Because that's what healthy sheep do. You say, well, pastor, you don't share the gospel? Yes, I do. I'm a sheep as well. And so during the week, you better believe I share the gospel. When I stand up here, I'm sharing the gospel. Yes, I'm a sheep. But when I'm standing in front of you right here today, I'm your shepherd. And I want to get you healthy so you can go and do the ministry that God has. Anybody get what I'm saying? That God has called you to do. See what I'm trying to say, point number five is this. God wants to speak through you. God wants to speak through you. Let me ask you a real personal question. Have you ever thought, well, God can't really use me? Raise your hand. Anybody ever thought that? God can't really use me. I'm not, I don't have, I haven't been to this class or I haven't, whatever. That so-and-so is more intellectual than I am. I'm more of a shy person, whatever. But the word tells me that God wants to use and speak through us. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20. Am I boring you? Okay, good. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. That's us. Since God is making his appeal through us, we plead on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Let's stop for just a second. See, what it's saying here is this. He wants to appeal you, us. We See, we're an ambassador for Christ. God came to us, but he wants to speak through us. There's a, there's a lot of born-again believers. God has come to you, but you're not allowing God to speak through you. And it's God's perfect will. I can't tell you how many people say, I want to know God's will for my life. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Let me see. Are y'all ready? I'm fixing to prophesy. I mean, I'm going to blow your mind. Oh, get ready. I'm thinking, you tell everybody I told you this. I'm telling you, this is God's perfect will for your life to allow God to speak through you. If you're going to clap, go ahead and clap for the Lord and give him a good clap. He wants to make his appeal through us. What's it sound like? Please. That's a plea, isn't it? I'm fixing to humanize God maybe in a way I shouldn't. I'm not sure. He hasn't told me not to do this. But I think if I was God and I gave my only son... To die for you, old scoundrel. You sorry, no good, nobody. You, I'm playing. But you get what I'm saying, right? Because he died for the whole world. Not just people running for sheriff, but people running from the sheriff. Huh? Parole officers and parolees. He died for everybody. He suffered on the cross for everybody. And you know there are going to be multitudes, millions, billions of people who never accept what God's Son 
done for them. If you, you're not God, but if I was God, I would be mad at the people that I called to make sure that they made sure to let everybody know what my son did. Does that make sense to anybody? I would die for some of you. Don't let me think about it a long time. I'll back out. But my wife, I'd die for. Like I said, y'all, but it better be in the heat of the moment. <laughs> but I wouldn't give up my son for none of you. I wouldn't give up my daughter for not one of you. Uh -uh. But God demonstrated his love in this manner. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I think that God is saying, I want you to plead to those around you to make it known to those around you that my son Jesus died for them and all they have to do is place their faith in this love that he gave on the cross and if they believe, they'll be reconciled. They'll be made a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's what we're to do. We're to plead on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled unto God. I feel like I should take a moment to pray. I don't know why. Lord, with that being said, convict our hearts right now. Just with that is enough. God, if I'm not telling the story, forgive me, God. I repent for not telling the story. I repent of not sharing my testimony. I repent of saying, well, it would be awkward, or God, you know I'm shy, or you know that's just not what I do, God. I repent. Forgive us, Father. Stir up the gift. No. Let us stir up the gift that's on the inside of us. I'll go to say this. Did you know not sharing the gospel? Are you ready? Is sin. To not share the gospel, to not make evangelism part of your life, to not wake up and say, I'm going to catch a big one today. If that's not our mindset. Lord, put me in the place, whatever you got to do. I want to lead somebody to the Lord. Did you know if that's not our mindset, you're sinning? You say, I don't believe that. The Bible says to know to do what's right. You know what's right and you don't do it. To not do it, it is sin. I don't know that I've ever heard a preacher say that, but I'm standing on the truth to tell you today, if you don't have a mindset of evangelism, you're sinning against God. We must take sharing the gospel, make it our responsibility. God wants to speak through us. It's not enough for God to flow to you. He wants to flow through you. Is the Lord speaking to anybody in here today? Is the Lord speaking to anybody in here today? Number six, we must be prepared. We must be prepared. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts regard Christ, the Lord is holy. Ready at any time. Listen to this. Ready at any time 
to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. So let me, let me break that down to you. We as born again believers, even though we live in a crazy world, we got peace. Say amen. Even though we live in turmoil and everybody seems to be losing their mind, we still got sanity in ours, amen? We can still go to work and we ought to have joy in our lives and in our hearts. And even though bad things happen to us, we still got joy. We've still got something on the inside of us that makes a lost person say, why are you so happy? Why are you so different? They know what's going on in your life and they'll say, why haven't you lost your mind? If I was you, I'd have done went crazy by now. And then you should be able, is anybody listening to me right now? You should be able then at that moment, because God just opened a door, I mean a wide open door. I ask God, I say, God, don't just crack the door open. When you open the door, open it wide because I'm so stupid, I'll miss it. God, open it wide. And that's a wide open door right there. Why do you act the way you do? Then you better be prepared If anyone asks you for a reason, for the hope, because see, you ain't walking around hopeless. I used whitening toothpaste last night <laughs> just so I could smile. You ought to be smiling and they ought to ask you, why are you smiling? You ought to be able to give them a reason. This is why I'm smiling. You see a smile on my face, there's a smile inside my heart. There's joy inside of me. I'm talking about happiness. See, happiness is based on what happens. But I got a joy that is unspeakable. I got a, I got a joy that don't make no sense. I got peace that passes all understanding. Well, why? Tell me. Tell me why. Well, that's right, but I'm... I'm, I'm Setting myself up to say something here. Why would you, I mean, what's the reason behind this? And I want to take it to Acts chapter 13. You ain't got to turn there. If you want to, you can. But Paul comes to this synagogue, the Jewish church. And he walks in there, and a custom back then was, and I know y'all glad this ain't the, the custom today. But if a visitor came in, they'd take the microphone, well, not, you know what I mean, and they'd say, oh, we got a visitor today. You want to know how to not get visitors to come to your church? Do what I'm about to tell you. We got a visitor today. Hey, would you like to say something? I'll never forget, Jason, you told me this story. Before Jason was living for the Lord and... Uh, he knew he needed to get right with the Lord. And uh, he went to a church in town. And they'd done the same thing to you, didn't they? So you didn't know it was biblical, did you? And you was mad at him that whole time. <laughs> and he didn't go back. Well, I'm glad you didn't go black, back, black. I'm glad you didn't go back. <laughs> Freudian slip. I'm, uh, I'm glad you came here. Well, they said, hey, we got a visitor, sir. It was Paul was the visitor. Sir, would you like to say something? <laughs> you don't ask a preacher. He was busting to say something. Are you kidding me? He thought, wow, this is great. Sure, I want to say something. And Paul begins to preach to them. The priest done sat down. Paul's going on. Preaching. And the Bible says that after he got done making his comments, which was actually a sermon. Now, I have never had anybody ask me to do this. They said, Paul, could you next Sabbath day, if you don't mind, could you come back and preach what you just preached? I ain't. I've been preaching a while now. I ain't never had anybody tell me to come back and preach the same message. But Paul was preaching. And he was preaching something they had never heard. And the Bible says 
that it done something to them in such a way that when he said, yeah, I'll come back, and when he came back, watch this. Acts chapter, well, in verse 44, uh, he said, I want you to come back, and Paul said, okay, I'll come back, and when he came back, verse 44, the Bible says the whole city I'm just trying to get folks back from COVID. He came the next week and the whole city came to hear what Paul was saying. I've seen revival in the church, but I ain't seen revival in the city. Well, not yet. I'm about to see it. I'm believing revival is going to sweep this whole city, this whole region, this whole state. I'm telling you, we... Hey, what, what, hey, I got to ask a question. I'm going to ask a question. What was he preaching? I remember in 2016 on Easter Sunday, I'd been here less than a year, and I told the people, this when we had one service, and I told the people, I said, I'm believing God. We're going to have 50 people give their lives to Christ. When I said it, I, I said, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> but we believed God. Some of you were there. Some of you wasn't. In Easter 2016, it would rain that year. We didn't even have a parking lot. Not the little one we got, we didn't even have that one. We had four-wheelers. Y'all remember that? Golf carts. Mud. I'll never forget me mama come. Sister me mama came up with her Sunday best on. Mud all over her high heels. On her pantyhose. I thought, Lord, I didn't think nobody was going to come. I knew she was going to come. I knew my wife had to come. And I knew Abriel had to come. Judah wasn't born yet. I didn't, I didn't step out. After I seen that, I seen the rain. I mean, it was pouring. I went back in my office. I just prayed. I said, Lord, please let fifty people, at least 50 people come to church. Let alone get saved. Well, when I got there, I come in. Back then, I was leading the music too. And I came in. And I looked. And I was like, whoa. It was full. Well, we didn't have the seats we had. It was full. And... Uh, Wow, this is amazing. I preached. I don't remember what we preached. I, I do. Jesus. We preached on Jesus. And when we gave the altar call, it was a little over 50. I don't remember. 52, 53 people responded to the salvation message. Oh, you couldn't tell me nothing. I'm telling you right now, I was so excited. I was so happy. I was telling everybody. That's one of the reasons the church grew because so many people were getting saved. And the reason the church is still continuing to grow is because people are getting saved. And so, I mean, it was just, whoa, I was blown away. In fact, some of you are here that got saved that day. We got leaders in our church that got saved that day. And so, I remember I was at Michael's Deli. And this guy came up to me. And he said, well, I heard y'all had a good service I thought to myself uh, that's a terrible adjective good service no when 50 people get saved that ain't no good service that ain't no good service that's a great service that's a tremendous service that's a wonderful service that's a magnificent service I got a lot of adjectives to use I ain't gonna use good I use good on it like a cheeseburger that's a good cheeseburger but when 50 people get saved that's great he said I heard you had a good service I said no sir I said we had a great service and then he looked at me Did I tell you we was at Michael's Deli? He looked at me and he said, with, a, with a, a dumb look, a dumb, sarcastic look, a look like I really don't believe it. And then he said this. He said, did I tell you all I was at Michael's Deli? <laughs> he said, well, what in the world could you preach that would cause 50 people to come to Jesus. I about took my six-inch Philly cheesesteak and slapped him across the face with it. Did I tell you I was at Michael's Deli? I said, well, I didn't say it like that. I said, well, we preached, I preached Jesus. He looked at me like, and more, friend? 
Listen, if Jesus is not enough, he'll never be enough. There ain't enough. But the Bible says where he is lifted up, he will draw all men nigh, all men unto him. That is what Paul began to preach. Look right here, look right here. I'll tell you what he preached. Acts 13, 38, 39. This is why I put this is what I put my hope in. And this is the message Paul preached. Are you ready? We're fixing to close. Therefore, this is what he said. He got the microphone. He said, okay, yeah, I want to say something. Therefore, let it be known to you, brothers and sisters, that through this man, what's his name? Jesus. Through this man, forgiveness of sins is being proclaimed to you. And everyone who believes is justified. Oh, hallelujah. Justified through him, Jesus, from everything that you could not be justified from through self-effort, through the law. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. That, that is my defense. So when you come and you ask me, why? When they come, you better be prepared. You better be ready. When they come and ask you why you got peace of mind and why you got joy, you can tell them because through Jesus Christ, all of my sins have been forgiven. Anybody thankful for that? Anybody thankful for that? That all your sins... All of them, all, 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 all of them. Well, what about that one too? What about that theirs too? All of our sin. Hey, 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 hold on. And, and, and those who are standing, just keep on standing. The others, they'll get with you in just a minute. They need to think about their sin because they may have forgot how bad they were, how jacked up they were, how messed up they were. Oh, now they want to stand up. Now they want to stand up. They forgot what they've been through and what God brought them out of. Listen to this. It says, yeah, go ahead now, stand. Everybody stand. Then it says, everyone who believes is justified. Ooh. What does that mean? I heard somebody say, it means just as if you had never Paul said, I'm a chief. I'm the chief among sinners. I got any chiefs of sinners in this house? So I, I'm a jacked, I was a jacked up mess. Chief, huh? Couldn't tell the truth, lied all the time. Huh, anybody in here stole, you, you stole everything? You a, th you a th was you a thief? Steal anything. If it wasn't tied down, you'd take it, huh? Come on, that's all right. But now you know what? Through the blood of Jesus Christ, you know what? You've been justified just as if. Just as if. Just, listen, man won't do that. Man, don't forgive you like Jesus will forgive you. Jesus will forgive you and he'll forget it and he'll cast your sin as far as the east is the west. That's why I got joy. Why you go to church? Why you serve God? Why, why are you telling people about Jesus? because I've been forgiven of all my sin. The ones you don't want nobody to know about, forgiven. The ones you ain't never told nobody about, forgiven. I need to tell somebody right now, the one that haunts you sometimes when you get by yourself, that one's forgiven too. Quit bringing it back up. Quit letting the devil use it against you. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. God has forgiven you one time if you ask God to forgive you you don't keep on rehearsing that sin over and over if you took it to the Lord he has forgiven you and you know what he's justified just as if I've never see I can go to the Lord in prayer not because of my goodness but because of his goodness I can worship here. Some of you think, 
I know people up there, they lifting their hands so loud and so, and they're so loud and they're praising God so much. I could never do that because, you know, I've done this and I've done that. But listen, when your sins are forgiven, you know, the person that's worshiping out loud, you think, well, maybe they're boisterous. Maybe they've just embraced the fact that they have been forgiven of all their sin. All their sin. You know, I think somebody, I can't get off of this. I think somebody needs to know today that you can be forgiven of all of your sin. All of your sin. Every one of your sin. All of them. All of them. It don't matter how vile. It don't matter how wicked. It don't matter how many times you've done it. You can be forgiven of all. Somebody shout all. Somebody shout all. All of your sin justified through him from everything there ain't no better truth than that truth is there is there no better truth given of all if you don't know that you need to know it. you need to know what that feels like it's my reason for this joy that I have. It's the reason for this compassion that I have for the lost. It's the reason I preach the way I preach. It's because all of my sins, every sin that held me bound, every sin that held me captive, all of my sins. That's why I can look at the drug addict and I'm not intimidated by the scars on their arms, the sores on their face because Jesus can forgive them of all. That's why I can take this gospel to anybody and so can you because there's nobody too bad. There's nobody that's did too much. There's no thief, there's no alcoholic, there's no fornicator. There's nobody who's done too much that God can't rescue them, save them, and forgive them of all. I see, I see, I see my brother back here in the in the far right corner over here, my right corner, and he was clapping, he was clapping just hard, really hard just then. And it reminded me when you walked in this building. And we gave the altar call. Carnell was the first one to come down this altar. Big old, strong, manly man. I guess you are. And he came down this altar with tears of repentance. He was, Jesus was, what was going on? Jesus was forgiving him of all. Of all of his sins. All of his sins. Hallelujah. Every sin you've ever committed. Go just like that. Wash away just like that. All of your sins. Huh? Don't let him praise God by himself. Don't let him pray. Anybody thankful that all of your sins. of your sins have been forgiven this is what we put our hope in this is the reason why Pastor Ron who's preached the gospel for several years and why he's right now he's been in more church services than probably all of us and right now he's got tears rolling down his face because he remembers the day that all of his sins all of his sins were washed away all of his sins were washed. God, take us back. Take me back to the heart of worship. Singers, musicians, I don't know why you ain't already up here. I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When 
It's all. Church, are you with me? All about you. All. All. All my sins have been forgiven because Jesus took them. All. Therefore, it's all about you, Lord. I got one more last point, and if you'll just let me say seven. This is number seven. We must be willing. Well, we just talked about it. We must be willing to compel people to come to Jesus knowing he won't turn anyone away. Ain't that good? See, I can tell anybody about Jesus because there ain't nobody Jesus is going to say, no, I can't forgive them. There ain't nobody you're going to take to Jesus, lead to Jesus, that Jesus says, I don't want them. So with that in mind, who would you not, who can you not tell about Jesus? Jesus said, let me tell you a parable. He said, there was a master. He, he, he got a party ready. Everything was ready. The food was ready. He got a party. It's going to be the party of all parties. And he went and he invited people on his guest list. Are you with me? Can you hold on just a minute? He was, he was, he was, he said, I want you to go out. Go to these people. And he told them who to go to. And they went to him. And you know what they said? They said, Master, we're sorry to tell you, but everybody we ask in that first list, they don't want to come. One said they bought some oxen. Uh, some, some new ox and they can't come. Uh, somebody said they got married and they can't come. Somebody said they bought a house and they can't come. He said, fine. He said, go out to the highways and the dirt roads, the alleys, that side of town. You know what I'm talking about? Go and invite them to come. They went out. They brought them back. They said, Jesus, they said, Master, we've done what you asked us to do. They're coming. He said, Good. He said, Yeah, they're coming. But, Master, there's still room. For more, he said. Good. Now they got getting to me. Now I was a third. I was on the third list. He said, "Go out now to the hurting and the broken, the jacked up, the messed up. Go to them and tell them I got a place." around the table I got a seat with their name on it I'm throwing a party and I want them to come be my guest let me tell you something whether you know it or you don't know it I'm here to tell you I'm pleading I'm letting you know something God told me to tell you you are on God's guest list He wants you. He wants every sinner outside of these four walls. He wants every person lost right now in this church. Don't you dare now. See, I'm to give you an invitation. That's what I'm doing. I'm giving you an invitation to not to a party, but I'm giving you an invitation to forgiveness of sin. I'm giving you an invitation to salvation. I'm giving you inv an invitation to purpose. I'm giving you an invitation to life. And I want to give the invitation right now. Is that okay with everybody? If you want to make Jesus your Lord, there's some people in this house, they, they, 
they, they're familiar with the invitation because they accepted it and they know all about this, this wonderful thing that the Lord has prepared for those who will come to Him. They've experienced the freedom from sin and the freedom from guilt and the freedom from shame. But you haven't. But today, you can. Brittany, come here. You always been safe. Huh? You ain't always been safe. You been a sinner? A big one. Uh, oh, you Donald Trump. Huge. She said huge. restored back my um, my faith, my children, my family, um, love, loving myself. Yeah. yeah, job. I got a good job. I got an apartment now. Yeah, I pay my own bills. Come on, come yeah. On. <laughs> That's what God can do. Well, she didn't tell you like I'm going to tell you, but she was a low down drug addict. Nobody could trust her. Her family back gave up on her, but God got a hold of her and changed her life. And if he'll do it for her, he'll do it for you. You say, well, I ain't as bad as her. Well, praise the Lord. If he'd done it for her, He'll do it for you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, the Bible says nobody can come to Jesus unless they be drawn by the Father. I pray right now, Father, that you would draw people, that you would draw them right now. Father, draw them right now. Speak to their hearts, God. Tug on their hearts right now. In Jesus' name, with every head bowed and every eye closed. If you don't know Jesus today and you want to place your faith in Him, you want to have a relationship with God, you want to have all your sins forgiven because you're full of shame, you're full of condemnation, you're full of guilt. I know what it's like. I've been there. I know what it's like. But the Lord can forgive you of all your sin today. If you want to receive, if you want to receive forgiveness today, if you want to make Him the Lord of your life, this is what I want to do. I told you there's some folks that's been to the party. They've accepted the invitation. This is what I want us to do. I want you to ask the person next to you or behind you, beside you. I want you to do, because we don't do nothing by ourselves here at Remnant. We're a family. And I want you to ask the person to the next to you. Ask them, if you need to go to Jesus today, I'll go with you. And then take them by the hand and let's come down here. Will you ask them? Ask them right now. Ask them right now. Don't be ashamed. See, we're going to practice evangelism right now. Right now. If you need to go down to the altar, I'll go with you. Ask them right now. Ask them right now. Is there anybody? I'm coming back, come on, to the heart of worship. It's all about you. Come this way. Come on. Come here, ma'am. Come on, it's okay. 
Come face me. You ain't got to face them. Look at me. Things I've made. It's all about you. Anybody else? All about you. Come on, anybody else today? I'm coming back. One more time. Cause, hey, one more time. Is there anybody? If you need to come, you waiting for somebody to come? They've already come. I'm already down here. Don't you miss this moment. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm telling you, don't miss this moment. If you need to come, I'll go down with you. I'm already down here. Amen. You feel Paisley? You feel the Lord drawing you? You feel the Lord drawing you? You feel the Lord drawing you? Today, you feel the Lord drawing both of you today? We're going to pray. And if you pray this prayer, where's those, where's those who, where's some of my prayer folk at? Come on, come behind these people. Come on. Come on. Holly, come on behind these people right here. Come on. Come right here behind, around the front. All about you. Jesus will, wants to, will, and is going to forgive you of all your sin. All your sin. We're going to pray. And if you believe by faith, what you pray, if you believe God, He's going to forgive you of all your sin. And after this prayer, you are saved, washed, cleansed, made brand new. A brand new career. And this, now you've got to serve the Lord. Live for the Lord. Okay? And you're going to want to. Because this is the best thing that could ever happen to you. Church, will you stretch your hands this way? We're going to pray this prayer. Are you ready? I want y'all praying it out loud on your microphones. I want everybody here. We're going to make a loud noise unto God, okay? Because we can come boldly. He wants to hear us. So ready? Yeah. Fine. That's going to happen. Absolutely. Ready? Let's pray. Say, Lord. Lord. Here I am. Here I am. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me, Cleanse me under your blood. Under your blood. Forgive, me of the things I've done. Forgive me of the things I've done. The way I've lived. I give my life to you. I receive your mercy. I receive your grace. Thank you for wanting me. Thank you for loving me. I turn away from sin. And I place my faith. My trust. My heart in your hands today right now I know all my sins my past has been erased I'm forgiven I'm loved by you I have a new life and I'm going to live it for you in Jesus name Amen come on can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise I want you to listen to me real quick they got some people right here, they're gonna hand you something to fill out. Fill it out, cause I wanna send something to you. I wanna tell you, encourage you. Come help them fill it out. I want you to, I wanna encourage you to come to New Believer Small Group every Monday night. If you just got saved or rededicated your life to the Lord, you need to come to New Believer Small Group, okay? Food's provided, child care's provided, I'm gonna teach it. There'll be a bunch of people that love you and like you and, and are just like you, just like me, and they will, will want you to be there, okay? So that's your next step. I love you. Can we give God a shout of praise in this house?